Hello, hello, and welcome to the Borealis Experience. I'm your host, Aurora, life coach and companion on this beautiful journey called life. I'm so happy to be spending some time with you today. I hope you can just either go about your business and listen to my episode here, or just take a breather and sit down, lay down on your couch, focus in on your breath, and take in my energy, my experience, my thoughts that I have on certain topics. As the title uncovers already, <laughs> I'll be talking about a, a huge taboo topic today, erectile dysfunction, erectile unpredictability, sex-starved relationships. Why do I pick these topics? Because I think that sex, sexuality, intimacy has such a huge effect on our well-being, on our sense of self. And if I was not to talk or address these topics, I would feel that my podcast is not complete. I want my podcast to be a 360 <laughs> roundhouse kick on your mental health. I want to shine the light on the biggest shadows of society. And I approach it with love, curiosity, and deep appreciation. I don't want anybody to feel uncomfortable. I want people to, yeah, have a look at things and realize that, hmm, this might be a blind spot. I might want to dig a little deeper there. Maybe I've been run away, sorry, running away from this topic. But it's actually the topic that requires some attention. So I want to be here for you to slowly guide you down into this little rabbit hole and you decide if it's too triggering, then just have your hands off. But if it feels right, if it feels good to be digging a little deeper, then just keep listening. And if you ever feel like reaching out and going deeper, if you feel ready, trust me, you will never feel ready engaging on a coaching journey. But if you feel it is what you need right now, then reach out to me on Facebook, on Instagram, shoot me a message and ask me all the questions that we want to address um, or jump on a call for me. It's all for free. And we'll explore if we are a good match and how I could be helping you. All right, let's dive into today's topic of sex-starved relationships. First of all, I want to applaud every couple who has made it through the last two years. You guys are warriors. You guys are probably so exhausted you guys are still together but maybe you have had your yeah troubles with each other but for some reason you decided to stick together and that's very honorable you know in a time where people can just exchange their partners like a piece of retail uh, on the shelf um, it's it's really cool that some people just decided to stick together and maybe you would have parted but you think that um, dating is very difficult during a pandemic and so you decide to stay with your partner that's valid too but I want you to see soon enough that you are lying to yourself and lying to yourself when it comes to your relationships, your partnership, um, your romantic life is detrimental. If you decided to stick together 
then I am almost a hundred percent certain that your sex life has suffered under the pressure, the mental ups and downs that the pandemic was bringing with. And is it a surprise? No, I don't think so. <laughs> You know, our nervous system, our brain is deeply connected to our sexual desires and drive. Um, some even say that the brain is the biggest sex organ. So now if you inhaled a couple of these news during the pandemic, if you were affected in any way, then it is very very likely that your sex drive was affected as well. Maybe at the beginning you were, you know, happy to be staying home and you Netflixed around, you Amazoned around and you let your hair down, you let your hair grow and you had wild sex to keep your mind in a beautiful, juicy space. But slowly and surely that weaned off. And the anxiety kicked in, you know, the uncertainty, the financial troubles. Um, and if you were not struggling, then certainly some people around you, and that affects you as well. We're very, very sensitive beings. We are all connected to each other. And even if we are doing great, if we know that another person in our life is suffering, then it also may affect your sex drive. Now, unfortunately, I think that no man will come onto my show and talk about erectile unpredictability or dysfunction. Um, it's a pity. We're not there yet. I get it. It's way too tough to talk about it. But if you feel called to, sorry, open up about this, Please don't hold back. You would be helping so many men out there and also women. This podcast is here to reveal things that are supposed to be revealed that connect us, you know, more deeply if we share with each other. And I'm sure if I was to talk to my girlfriends about this topic, I would meet lots of resistance first, but then I would meet maybe like huge connection and vulnerability and um, a heart opening conversation that could bring healing into their relationship. The very tricky part about erectile dysfunction and unpredictability is that it is totally terrifying for the guy. It's totally terrifying for the girl. Um, I'm only, um, you know, navigating through heterosexuality ever since I got interested in sex, so I can't speak um, on other like relationship styles and sexual orientations um, I'd love to learn more about it I'd love to learn how sexuality was affected um, in different styles of um, sexuality and sexual orientation but I only speak on what what I have experienced a little bit I'm always open to learn new things um, so it's terrifying for the girl, terrifying for the guy. But I would say that the guy is under way more pressure um, because the guy is in a position of having to perform. The woman is in a position of receiving, and of course that can switch always, but I think in general, I'm generalizing heavily now, I know. <laughs> um... The guy is under way more pressure. I feel that a girl can always, you know, take a little bit of a lube and fake an orgasm and, you know, not be in the mood, but okay, let's do it then. 
But if a man is not able to have an erection, then a penetration um, coming together um, to have intercourse is going to be extremely difficult. And that makes it really hard for both, of course, but more for the guy. I want to create unity and I want to create compassion um, and empathy between both. And I hope that we can open up this conversation and have and listen to what men have to say to this uh, at some point in humanity's evolution. And also women open up. You know, us women, we might have gone through a situation where the guy tells the other guy and she overhears it hey I was just not into her and this is why nothing happened but deep down inside he was very you know emotionally involved he was very insecure all of a sudden but the woman only gets the message of yeah I'm not attractive I'm not worthy of good sex so there's a whole Oh, mess around this situation and nobody really talks about it not even you know best friends I feel because it's such a sensitive topic but on the other side it's weighing so heavily on on most people's chest so that's why I want to talk about it it's going to affect you and your day and your thoughts your self-worth, and your relationships. You might be building up resentment towards the other person, towards your partner. You might build up resentment and hatred towards yourself. And that's so scary. That's so sad. Our nervous system, like I said at the beginning, is deeply engaged with our sex drive and if we consume news that are scary if we feel insecure uncertain about our future your body like the last thing your body is gonna want and think of is creating offsprings and that's what sex is originally for right so we can't cut that out um even if you don't want to have babies and have all the measures in place to not create a new human being, uh, that is the root. So desires and openness, heart-to-heart -heart feelings and conversations are being shut down when we are in a stressful situation. And we have been in a very stressful situation situation for the past two years and maybe before that already it is so important as a couple to reconnect and to be curious and to talk about it as hard as it may seem at the beginning if you open up to your partner and tell him or her hey I miss us I'd love to be close again and I know it's going to be tough at the beginning I know you don't feel sensual or pretty but let's have some sensual sexy times again in a very slow sex kind of manner let's let's be gentle again let's let our guard down again and you will notice that something deep inside of you is going to relax. You'll be doing something really courageous and trying to find that conversation. And it's going to make you stronger no matter what. It's going to make you stronger as an individual. It's going to make you stronger as a couple. And dear listeners, if there is singles among us today, please know that I want you deeply involved in this too because I'm sure that self-pleasure has been on a very, very low priority list, right? 
we don't feel like pleasure, pleasuring ourselves if um, we feel stressed and anxious. It has nothing to do with your worth. It has everything to do with your nervous system having to adjust again to relax and to be open and vulnerable. Courageous. So, if we can all start a conversation with our partners and share how we have felt, not ignoring this anymore and living in denial of this because we know very well that both parties involved are aware of what's going on and not talking about it and escaping from it is not going to make you stronger and more resilient for the future. You know, a lot of people escape into their work, into their uh, raising kids, into creating a business, whatnot, and justify by, yeah, but we have to make money, but we have to pay bills. But if the foundation is, you know, crippled from this intense pandemic, then your relationship is going to be on a shaky, shaky base. And no one wants that. Insecurities are going to be on a rise. You'll be insecure as soon as a woman or man enters the room that feels comfortable in their skin. You will feel threatened when there's people around you who feel in tune with themselves. You will feel weak. And that's the last thing I wish for you. I want you to feel strong. I want you to feel courageous. I want you to express what you feel from a very genuine, loving place. Be open and seek out that conversation. And know that it's going to feel awkward at the beginning. But as a whole, it's going to make you feel more attuned to your soul's calling. You're so worthy and you're not your penis, you're not your vagina, you're so much more. Open up to sensuality again, very slowly. At first, open up about the feeling of being shut down and closed out, anxious, nervous. And usually you need compassion. All right. If ever you feel like reaching out and asking questions, if you like that episode, please rate or review my podcast. Subscribe to it if you haven't already to not miss out on future episodes. And I will be out there for you very soon again. Thank you for listening. <laughs>